Welcome back to Sailing MV, where this week we wake up in the 17 Islands National Park in Indonesia amidst the maze of islands and rocky outcrops, all surrounded by vibrant reefs and breathtaking scenery. A dream destination for cruisers. Yet one that many would believe is off limits for an open 66 with a nearly five metre draft. Yet here we are, anchored with our three and a half metre rudder alarmingly close to the nearest reef. Who knew living on the edge could be so scenic? Oh, and just to spice things up a bit, we've got gearbox problems resulting in no reverse gear plus a broken fuel line. Is this connect, you see? But hey, that's just a minor detail when you're surrounded by such beauty, right? So while others might say it's impossible to cruise with a draft like ours, we say challenge accepted. Join us as we navigate this paradise and prove that sometimes the best adventures come with a slice of chaos. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. We survived the night and now you can see, we can see that we were actually pretty close to this reef, just here. Ah. We dove on the anchor and um, it's very well buried and we couldn't move much further forwards as there's reef that side as well, so it's pretty narrow. So it looks like we're in a good position. See the reef is there, it's not that far from us. Aside from our picturesque surroundings, we awoke this morning to more good tidings. Since leaving Vanuatu, we'd been experiencing water mixing with our gearbox oil every time we ran the engine. The leak is either coming from the prop shaft seals, despite having replaced them during our refit, or from the damaged thread on the drain plug, which is now glued in place. Timo re-glued this underwater a few weeks ago, and it seems that this job has fixed the issue. For now, at least. What? Well, it's transparent. Okay. One kitchen gloves. A little bit of plastic silicone, yeah. underwater job, a scuba dive mechanic, it's a new series. Yeah. So we can try to do the job only to the, the clutch. Cone clutch. The cone clutch costs 1,500 euro. Mm. Well, we always try to get some quotes. It's crazy, I me. can't believe it. What? It's transparent. Timo also took the time to redo the job fixing the broken fuel line. The pipe uh, injector with the with the epoxy party. We try to see if leak. Sure, I got to leak. Three, two, one. Don't leak. We don't emotion it. I don't know for how many times, but the amount is good. But whilst we might not have the funds for a new gearbox just yet, we've got plenty of other things to feel grateful about. Unfortunately, perhaps not everyone appreciates the surroundings. So here's the beautiful beach. 
and here's the what's left of lunch. <laughs> This unique style of boat is typical of this area and creates a fishing platform from which they shine bright lights at night and lower a big square net below the boat which they pull up when full of fish or squid. Next we checked out the underwater world. Most of this underwater footage and some of the other videos are thanks to our great crew, Abby and Jacob. They also made some videos about their time with us. If you're interested to see more, I'll put a link in the description. And finally, we went ashore to check out the little town here. It looked like the area had recently been affected by a big flood. This is the super uh, right here. The locals here live a simple life. They need the coconut. Of you. <laughs> uh, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey! It's just the mating pens. No. As usual, we try to top up our f fuel and food whenever we stop. The fuel. Uh, the fuel there is a, on the back, somebody put the bomb bucket, the fuel in the machine, and the machine gives the fuel. Watch it yeah. coming everything from one big bucket open, and they take with one uh, like the flash of water. You see, they take with the end and they burst inside. <laughs> so, from that to this to you, you're lucky me, I filter. <laughs> Something that becomes more tricky the more remote we are especially as our Italian captain is rather dependent upon his Mediterranean diet. Okay, it's only two toast. Slay strawberry. There is strawberry inside. Ah, ah, nice. But so much plastic for one toast. We often have to make do with less than ideal ingredients. So this is our chicken. 
we're having for dinner this evening. Soon to be, yeah. Oh, anaknya ni kayaknya yang ini ada ibunya. How's it feel? Um, it's hot, so the water was boiling. Kan keluar, baik. Yeah, but it feels uh, yeah, peculiar. We made the mistake of asking if they had chicken, which resulted in them bringing us two dead chickens which, which still had their feathers on. We didn't feel we could back out of the deal, so instead asked the locals for help in preparing them. Is that No. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. Wash your fingers. Oh, shit. What the? Count your fingers. No, no, no. No, maybe. And then, but as a new day dawned, we had a new destination in sight, and so it was time to hoist our sails and head back out through the reefy maze in daylight this time. This is what we came for in the night. We were continuing our journey westwards along the northern Flores coastline to another beautiful remote anchorage whose entrance also meant manoeuvring carefully between reefs on either side. What are you going to do with that? You're going to with the lamb on the rest of the world. Is it raw? Yeah. Alright. But luckily our captain managed to transform the two small chickens into a first class dinner. Luckily this time we arrived with good daylight and excellent visibility. Another dramatic entrance. And we sent the captain up the mast to get a really clear view of the reefy entrance. Now I want to explain it. We have a one minute for a space. We don't have a space to where it is. We have to stay in the area that before in front of this line of wire, the mouth from the right. We have to do one circle there and check if we have one area 20 meters or round. It's probably because 20 meters I mean we have to release a 80 meter chain. We have a big, uh, big revolution around to us. And so we awoke to a new and equally hazardous paradise. Yeah? That's where they sleep. What? 
the antelope or our candle call. Eh? The this deer. The, the typical uh, one night, the grass die, they sleeping down. See? Here the wood. They're together. What so many they are. Yeah, man. These are to see. Eh? This island is just on the edge of the Komodo National Park and the fauna here are close to what you can find there, such as deer, wild pigs, snakes and scorpions. So we wore boots and carried a machete for this hike. <laughs> Top to the mountain! Other island, other mountain! Woo! And also underwater, the nature continues to impress us with the diverse, alive, multicoloured coral and plenty of fish. Whilst underwater, we noticed something wrapped around our propeller. This is what came off our propeller. <laughs> Maybe the answer to our vibrations and um, low speed. If you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment, share it with your friends. And don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Yeah! And if you'd like to see more exclusive content from us, or to buy us a coffee, why not join our Patreon or Coffee community? I'll put the links in the description. Thank you.